one of the very first pronouncements that our current Pope proclaimed after his election was to say that everybody is a child of God, even atheists. Ooh! And the religious right that hasn't met the right Christian became very perplexed. <gasps> oh my gosh, how could he say that? That even those who do not believe in God or enemies of God are God's children. But the gospel today makes it very clear that there are sheep of the fold of God that are not part of the flock. And these two he shall lead. One of the best stories to illustrate the heart and the mind of God is after Moses leads the people of Israel out of Egypt through the parting of the Red Sea when the Egyptians are drowned, the Talmud, which is the explanation of the Jewish faith, and you know that we are baptized Jews because Jesus was Jewish, we follow a Jew. Jesus was not a Christian. So the Old Testament or the Hebrew Scriptures and the faith of the Jewish people, the people of Israel, is of utmost importance to us because that's our faith. It's the same God. The God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob is our God. It's the God of Jesus Christ, the same one. And the Talmud, which is the explanation of the Jewish faith, which was of utmost importance to the Jewish people and is to this very day, says that after God parted the Red Sea and the Egyptians drowned and the people of Israel, the Jews, were saved, went to safety, God is in heaven and all the angels are celebrating. They are partying in heaven. They're having a good time and God is in a corner crying. God is sad and the angels come up to him and say, why are you sad? Why aren't you celebrating? Why aren't you partying? And God looks at the angels and says, how could I celebrate? And the angels say, well, why wouldn't you celebrate your people? Your people, your children are safe now, out of slavery, out of Egypt. And God says, how could I celebrate when my children drowned? How could I be happy when my children drowned and perished? in the Red Sea. That is the heart of God. But we don't like that God. We like revenge, don't we? We like hatred. Huh? We like to have enemies. We like division. We like to follow the devil who is the great divider. Not God who is the great uniter. Look at our country. Huh? Just turn on the news. Look at even your own families. People don't talk to each other because they have a difference of opinions. They don't like each other. They drop each other. You're not like me. So I don't have to like you. That's not God. 
And that's not who we are called to be either. How horrible this past week, how horrible that after the former police officer who killed that African-American man, George Floyd, by having his knee on his neck for more than nine minutes and was, of course, convicted of the murder. How horrible that there were so many people out partying and even religious leaders. Makes me want to vomit that they have a reverend in front of their name. Out celebrating that somebody is going to jail. What a, what a cause for celebration. Makes me want to vomit if that's where your religious faith is. To celebrate the misfortune of one family. Somebody's husband, somebody's child, somebody's father is going to jail. I visited prisoners. There's no cause for celebration. That's revenge. That's vengeance. That's more hatred. That's no, that's no path to healing at all. When you just want revenge. It's not justice. The Good Shepherd today, whom we are called to follow, this is called Good Shepherd Sunday, calls us to a different type of attitude in our life. And this Good Shepherd is not just calling you to live, but to have life in abundance. Not just to survive, but to thrive. And notice Jesus is is the good shepherd, not the good teacher here in John's gospel. Because in John, it's not about what you can do, but about what Jesus does for you. There's no sermon on the mount in John's gospel, no golden rule. And Jesus does not call us the light of the world, but says, I am the light of the world in John's gospel. Because it's all about God coming to do for us what we could never do for ourselves. So much does God love you. You know, that's called grace. And we, we have forgotten about that. We focus on this prayer or this spiritual practice or taking this class or that. And we forget about God who is all-powerful and who is all-loving. John is presenting Jesus doing for us, not us doing for God, because we are all the beloved, wayward, lost, sinful sheep. And that's all of us. Everybody. Wayward, sinful. You're just as much a sinner as the next person. If the shepherd could teach the sheep how to save themselves, there would be no need for him to lay down his life for them. But we can't save ourselves. We need him to do it for us. And he does this because of how much God loves us. Just like we are. Now, we want to be not how we want to be or how He wants us to be. He loves us as we are with all of our sinfulness and all of the baggage that we carry. Do you read the 23rd Psalm? Do you even know what that is? That's in the Bible, you know? It's this book right here. Okay. We have them for sale. <laughs> In fact, I actually ordered some more. They're coming. 
uh, the ones that I personally like to have, the Augustine Institute Bibles, the English Standard Version, absolutely fantastic. We're going to have some more of them available for all of you. And the Psalm 23rd says, The Lord is my shepherd. I read this 23rd Psalm every day. Who makes me, who makes me, he makes me, huh? and leads me, and prepares for me, and guides me to green pastures. It, who He does it. A few years ago, I went to a priestly retreat in Poland led by the auxiliary bishop, one of the bishops of the Archdiocese of Warsaw, who in 2013, what happened in 2013? Some of you have forgotten already. I started this sermon by telling you uh, that the Pope was elected and the first pronouncement he made was to say that even atheists are children of God. Well, in 2013, Pope Francis was elected as the Bishop of Rome. And in 2013, also, this particular bishop that led the retreat that I went on, and I went to it specifically for that reason, because he was leading it, under the influence of a lot, a lot of alcohol and other substances in his body, he caused a terrible accident and ended up on a pole in Warsaw. Yes, he, a pole, drove into a pole in Poland. You know that Polish people are called poles, right? Poles? P-O-L-E, okay, so I'm a pole, okay. So he, a pole, drove into a pole in Warsaw, okay. Uh, speaking of poles, uh, you know John Paul II, the pope, two popes removed, was from Poland. Do you know that? Do you remember him still? Okay. And John Paul II, when he became pope, in Rome, in 1978, the first thing he did, do you know what that was? He outlawed, he banned all dogs from the Vatican. No more dogs, he said, in the Vatican. And do you know why? Because dogs pee on poles. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't know that? <laughs> so this part, but I'm getting, I'm digressing. I never do that, of course, you know. I never get off of the script. But uh, this, <laughs> this particular bishop, he caused a horrible accident and, of course, went to jail for it. He was arrested, plastered over... All the newspapers, because, you know, they love it. They just love it, right? You know, and, 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 and all the TV shows internationally, Bishop arrested. He was front page news, first news story on Polish television for months. Well, after... He was arrested. He's in jail. He needed somebody to bail him out. And so he began to call, he says, all of his bishop friends, one by one, to come and bail him out of jail. And no one would come. Not one of the bishops, his friends, you know. And then he called his uh, uh priest friends, those who worked in the chancery, you know, the higher-ups, the monsignors, and all the, all, all the ones with all the titles, you know, okay? He called them to come and bail him out. Nobody would come. Nobody. Except 
he said to himself, I will call Father John. Father John, an alcoholic, a womanizer, a drug addict. He's got all sorts of problems. And this Father John, and everybody knows who he is, let me, let me call him, he says. Nobody wanted to associate with this Father John. But he came right away and bailed him out. That's the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. In one line from what the bishop said during the retreat that will forever stay stuck with me is that in calling these bishops and chancery officials and other goody priests to come and help him and bail him out and get him out of jail, they would say to him, what were you thinking? What were you thinking? And the bishop responded that all he would say to them was, look, if I was thinking, I wouldn't have done what I did and I wouldn't be in jail right now. I wasn't thinking. Then he said something very memorable during this retreat that will forever be ingrained in my mind and in my heart. Situations like this just makes you thank God that Jesus Christ only died for sinners. not for the righteous, not for the people who have it all put together. We think we're better than others, don't we? We like to celebrate others' misfortunes, have parties out on the street when people are going to jail and open champagne bottles, right? You know? We like to do that. We don't like to celebrate when it's going good for people. When do you meet your friends? When you're down in the ditches and you need help? No. Anybody can throw some money at you. Makes you feel good when you give to the homeless person or somebody else. It's all for you. You meet your friends when things are going great in your life and people are celebrating with you that you got a home, a big home, or a nice car. Jealousy. The devil's the devil because of jealousy. Jesus Christ only died for sinners. He said, this particular bishop, you can Google all of this and read up about him. It's all online. He submitted his resignation right away from being a bishop to Pope Francis. And Pope Francis said, no! And the next plane come over to Rome. And he had him come over to Rome, brought him in to his apartment, sat him down and said, I refuse, I will not accept your resignation. You are going to get help. And for six months, he went to a rehab place for his drugs and everything else that he was taking and, and, and alcohol and other stuff that he had going on in his life. And afterward... In the cathedral, when he showed up after the six months, now remember, he was plastered all over the news in Poland. His first Sunday back, people showed up dressed in black with black balloons that said, 
we do not want this type of a bishop. The religious folks. We don't want you. And many of them were blocking his entrance into the cathedral. It's all online. On YouTube, there is a video of him trying to get in and people with signs, get out, we don't want you. Oh, lest we think we're so good, just recently, I won't mention his name, but in our own diocese, we got rid of a priest too from his own personal problems. You may remember, I won't get, I have to be careful because, huh? We like that, don't we? Just to get rid of people. But Jesus Christ died for sinners. But then the bishop said, you know, there was that one group that didn't want to let me into the cathedral. But then there was the other group dressed in white. from the red district of Warsaw. Do you know what the, the, the name of the street in Warsaw, the red district is? John Paul II Avenue. The prostitutes, the drug addicts, the alcoholics, they all showed up and said, this is the type of bishop we want. Kind of, if you read the Gospels, who was all for Jesus? Not the religious folks. Not those who had it all together. If we are to be imitators of the Good Shepherd, we should be shepherds, not hired hands. And many of us act like hired hands. We are only with our own sheep up to the moment when they disappoint us. Like the wife or husband who leaves their spouse when they cheat on them or fall into an addiction like alcohol or drugs or the casino. That's being a hired hand when you leave. When the wife's body changes or she falls into depression that's being a hired hand, not a good shepherd. Of the seven priests ordained with me, only that finished the seminary with me, only four of us are priests right now. I didn't sign up for this. I could say that many times over my 11 years. The very first couple I married, he went in for a routine operation to have his appendix taken out and the anesthesiologist did not do a good job with the oxygen to the brain and he ended up with brain damage. And after a year, she took the hospital settlement and said, I didn't sign up for this. The good shepherd never leaves us. So much so that he lays down his life for the sheep. That's till death do us part. Now, the Bible says we are the bride of Christ. You are his groom. And he is with you till death do you part. So are you a shepherd in your own life or a hired hand? When hardships and sufferings and problems come, when you are tired, when you feel like you just can't take it anymore with your spouse or children or life in general, do you give up? 
Whenever I meet with couples who are trying to get married and I say, you know, I have one question. If he cheats on you, are you going to leave him? And I ask the, both of them the same question. And 99% of the time they say, of course, he's out. Except one time she said, Father, well, that's not even a question because if he cheats on me, I'll kill him. <laughs> but you don't sign up. It's till death do you part. We will get through it. I'm in it for life. You're here for life. Jesus is with you for life. He never abandons you. You know, we have many hired hands in the church, hired Catholics, who act like all I need to do is make sure I get the rules down, check, 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 and I'm okay with God. No, you're not. Your heart has to be in it. It's not about rules. Jesus Christ isn't in your life to do a moral tune-up on you, a little self-improvement on you. He's in your life to be your good shepherd, to stand with you, to guide you, and to defend you when you cannot defend yourself. And ultimately... To die for you, the wayward sheep. So my final question this morning to each and every one of you is this. Jesus says, I know my sheep. They know me. And what does he say? They hear my voice and they follow me. So whose voice are you listening to in your life? If the voice you hear in the midst of your trouble is a voice calling you to trust, that's the voice of the shepherd. But, it, but if it is a voice leading you to cynicism, to give up, that's the imposter, the liar, the devil, the wolf who wants to devour you. If the voice you hear is calling you to be generous, to give, that's the shepherd. But it, if it is a voice calling you to selfishness, the self-centeredness, that's the imposter. If the voice you hear in your prayer is leading you to be faithful, to keep your promises, that's from God, that's the good shepherd. But if the voice you hear is calling you to break your promises, to lie, that's the imposter. If you hear an invitation in your prayer to focus on others, to make a difference in others' lives, to forgive, to not live by revenge. That's the voice of the shepherd. To be a peacemaker, a hope giver, a justice doer. That's the good shepherd. That's from God. But if you hear a voice other than that, that's the devil. You need to hear the voice that leads you, especially in the midst of everything that's around us. A voice that says, set aside your anger, your resentment, your grudge, your want for revenge. You need to hear the voice that says you are deeply and forever and unconditionally loved by God and that you have a dignity that nothing, nothing, nothing can take away your dignity, not even a DUI, nothing or any sin you could ever commit can take away from you the dignity, the child of God that you are, the love of God in your life because Jesus loves you so much, your good shepherd, that he gave his life for you so as not to have to live without you. So whose voice are you listening to the voice that says you were worth it all, even his life, or the voice that says you are not worth it, you are not good enough, not pretty enough, not smart enough, that there is no hope for you? Whose voice are you listening to? The voice of the good shepherd or the voice of the liar, the imposter, the accuser, the devil? the wolf. I listen 
I choose to listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd. For my sheep hear my voice. They hear me and they follow me. I am the Good Shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep and mine know me.